So everything you had told me, the advice you had told me, I had like tried to do it, but I couldn't do it. It just it, the devil was controlling me. Because when I when I had a conversation with my dad, and I understood the other side of the coin, um, of why he was absent apart from him fighting his demons and and uh, fighting his drug addictions, um, I didn't I didn't really understand. So I I guess. I forgave my father, but not really. Deontay, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, what's going on, Mr. Jeffrey? All this well, Deontay. Um, I'm calling to answer the biblical question. All right. Um, how often do you throw rocks at others? I never throw rocks. I never have thrown a rock at others. And, and why you why you never done it? Well, how, uh, because, how did you avoid ever doing it? Because I didn't avoid anything. You know, after really, like, um, sitting down to know myself, I started to understand that there's a me and a not me. And I can see now... Now that I'm taking seriously overcoming and trying to, um, you know, trying to get away from the ego self, letting the ego die, that the the rocks that I could be throwing to try to bring people down or whatever is really just me trying to make my own ego feel better. So what I'm saying, when I say I don't do it, I've never done it, it's because it's always been the influence of my ego or it's not my ego, but of Satan within the body. Amazing. I appreciate that, man. I want to respond, but I, I got to wait until Sunday. But very, very interesting. I just, can I bring up one more thing? Yes. Uh, so, I'm, you know, I, like I've, I've told you before, you know, I've called multiple times about different issues, right, that was happening in my life. Okay. And I pretty much didn't follow any of your advice for the first, like, two years. But I knew it to be true. I just, something in me, I couldn't do it. Like, I wasn't ready. Right. Yeah. And then recently, probably in the last few weeks, maybe like a month by now, something came over me. It was like the straw that broke the camel's back. And it was like when I really was like all thoughts are all lines. And I was just very, I was ready to overcome. You know, I had forgiven my parents years ago, but kind of how you said earlier, where people forgive and then that's it. They just, they continue to live in their own ego. Yeah. And that was me. And um, so everything you had told me, the advice you had told me, I had like tried to do it, but I couldn't do it. It just, it, the devil was controlling me. But I wanted, I wanted to go ahead and say that when I finally really gave it all to God, that day that the rebirth happened, when I really said, God, all these thoughts are not mine. They're all, all these opinions. I don't need any of them. I gave them up to him. Then everything you had told me to do happened naturally. It like happened just like I have a, a baby mother who's a lesbian that lives overseas. You told me to cut her off. When I started speaking up, really speaking up, she cut me off. She blocked <laughs> me. I can't see my daughter. And that's fine. But it didn't. Yeah. I knew that when I spoke up, it was going to possibly, that was going to be possible what happens. Yeah. But I was not willing to give up my soul just for the hurt. I, I didn't want to just be a face to smile at my daughter. I wanted to actually be a father. And when that day happened, she cut me off. And that was fine. Same thing with my wife. You told me that me and my wife, um, we should, I don't want to put all our business out there, but right. you told us, you gave us some advice personally. And it happened, and now when I see my wife and I correct her and things like that, she tells me things like, you know, when you correct me, it feels like it's burning on the inside. And I was like, that's the ego dying. Yeah. And that's what we're supposed to go through. And now when I see her look at me, you know, we haven't been, you know, I haven't been using her for the worldly pleasures, right? I've seen it in myself that I was using her for, I wasn't loving her, I was using her for the drug in between her legs, you know what I mean? Right. And now when I see her look at me, she doesn't look at she doesn't even look at me the same. She looks at me with a, like a genuine smile. 
And I say that to say this, when I walk around now, it's like, you know, I hear people say empathy and all these words that are supposed to mean this, like empathize with other people. But now I see it in a different way where when I walk around, I see people and I can see that they're miserable. I can see that they have pain. I can see that they're, you know, when the women are wearing these tight revealing clothes, it's not because they're quote unquote confident. It's that they're trying to get attention. They're trying to really yeah. look for love. Yeah. And the same thing with the guys when they're trying to search for these girls, they just want the, the twat and it's just, we live in a hell. Yeah. And so I just want to, again, I want to thank you because my eyes have been open and it's just been amazing. And it's been amazing for my family. And, and I just wanted to thank you very much. Amazing. That's amazing, man. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better. And the love that, God is, and that he has for us, is my blower. There are no words to put to it. But so stay with it, man. Amazing testimony. I appreciate that. Thank you. Have a great day, sir. You too, buddy. And I'll respond to the uh, biblical question on Sunday, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Yes, sir. Th- thank you, Deontay. That was amazing. I'm t- By now, I'm telling you, folks, it's for all who welcome the truth. And I know most won't. A handful of will. Most won't. Some are here, go and forgive your mama. They run and say, oh, mama, I forgive you. And then they'll brag about how they forgave, and that's it. As soon as some uh, uh, mess with their ego, they're scared, they're on the run. They think that they're their ego. Amazing call, Deontay. Thank you, man. Matt Diel, thank you for holding. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesse, for taking my call, and uh, I just want to say good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I just want to say that I, I, I should have taken your advice months and months and months ago when I first called in. Um, I, I know you do the show, um, and, and you get many phone calls. But um, I remember the advice I was giving you about my girlfriend and some things going on between us, and we have a kid. And uh, I had told you that I, I, I was, we were, I moved into her apartment, and, and uh, you told me that I need to move out and get my own place. And uh, if things work out, things work out. And uh, if they don't, then they don't. And I was so stubborn and uh, hard-headed. And the ego was still filled within me that I, I, I didn't take the advice. I didn't heed your advice. And, and I kept it going. I kept pushing. I kept trying for the family. And um, months later, you know, I have my apartment now. I went through a, uh, a custody battle, which I ended up getting 50-50, thanks to our governor president, Ron DeSantis. Um. And it, it took a while for me to understand when you were saying, you know, you have to, you have to forgive your father. Cause when I, when I had a conversation with my dad and I understood the other side of the coin, um, of why he was absent apart from him fighting his demons and, and, uh, fighting his drug addictions. Um, I didn't, I didn't really understand. So I, I guess I forgave my father, but not really. But um, now that everything has come to a close, I have my son. I have my own apartment. Um, I've allowed God to to heal me from the inside, to heal my heart. And, um, again, Jesse, I I should have listened to the advice that you gave me (laughs) the first time that I had called you, man. Um, it's It's been a long battle, and I'm just glad that I get to have my son and uh I can show my son a good example of a good father, a present father, an active father in his life and uh without dealing with his mother and all of the craziness that was going on in that in that relationship. Nice. Well amazing man. Well I'm glad you finally got it and things are working out. And from this day forward, if you're not already doing it Never, ever, 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 but never, never argue with her, the baby's mother, because yes. she, she, the devil in her is going to try to make 
you do something so that she can take you back to court and try to take your child away. Don't argue with her. You state your point and, and don't argue. Just leave it alone. Let her argue by herself. And if she get violent or whatever, you call the cops and have her arrested. Oh, oh, Jesse, we, we've literally just signed the paperwork for everything to be 50-50 and for me to get the time that I'm supposed to have with my son. Yes. Because I'm telling you, ever since I left back in April, it's been her dictating and controlling the time. Yeah. I went from four days to having three days with my son to three days to having two days from two days to just one night, and, and I couldn't deal with it no more, and I took her to court. And we signed the paperwork yesterday. <laughs> we're, we're, it's actually supposed to go in effect this Sunday, okay? And I guess she didn't understand fully what she was signing, being that it's 50-50, and I'm, I'm getting four threes, so four days off, three days off, and then interchanging every other week. And she's called me boo-hooing last night. OK, <laughs> boohooing and fighting with me and saying that she's not getting enough time with our son. And and it just is <laughs> I I've, I'm kind of amused at it because me, somebody that has had time taken away from me, you know, from from being with my my son, uh, she feels like she's not have ha hasn't had enough time. It's very strange and it is very baffling to me, you know. Well, then, and uh, the last caller that uh, I believe his name was Deontay was kind of confirmation to me that what I'm doing is is the right thing. You yes, know, being an yeah. active father and allowing God to drive me and be inside of my heart to guide me as yes, well. You know, absolutely. You should only love God with all your heart, soul and might and your neighbor as yourself and life will work for you. It will really work for you. And I don't care what con game she play, whether she try to be nice or be mean or argue or cry or laugh, don't fall for it. You stay patient. You stay calm so you can see the devil working through her, and you, you'll be fine because it ain't over yet, believe me. And, uh, but you stay calm so you can see what to do. Don't argue with her. Don't try to please her. Don't go along with her crap. You stay calm and do what's in front of you. And you haven't seen anything, man. It gets better. Jesse, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, I'm, uh, I'm an avid listener, okay? I, I listen to you as much as I can, especially. Um, and, Jesse, I, I just wanted to say I should have listened to the advice that you gave me a long time ago. I should have moved out when, when, I, when things got to the where they're at now, yeah. I should have I sh I should have just you know truly forgave my father and understood the other side of the coin. Yes. Um. And when I say under understand the other side of the coin, I understand that my mom, my mother, was bitter yeah. and vindictive yeah. and spiteful. And my when I talked to my dad and I said, Hey, look, why why did you do the things that you did? Why did you up and just abandon us? You know, just just forget about us. And word for word, my father said this. Your mother made things so difficult me to court by the whole child support process, by keeping, by turning you guys against me, that I just said, screw it. Yep. I said, screw it. If the kids want to look for me when they're older, if, if you and your brother want to look for me when you guys are older, then you guys will look for me. But you know what? I can't do nothing else for you guys. Yep. And, and now I've understood I mean, it's it's not justified because I, I feel like my father still should have been there and, and made moves to be active in our life. But the other the other side of the coin, I understand why he did it. You know, the when you're dealing with somebody like that, it's, it's tough to be active and present in yes. your child's life. Yep. The wickedness of the woman's heart is beyond understanding. Satan is her God. And she, uh, she, and she, she believed that it's her, it's the nature. She doesn't even realize, most women don't, some do, that it's the nature of the devil operating through them. But the wickedness of a woman's heart is beyond words to the point 
that he'll destroy your child, try to destroy you. He, and, and there's nothing, even the courts can't stop it. And that's why I'm telling you to stay calm. Don't fall for the trick that she's going to play, the crying, the tears, and all. It's just all trying to get back and get control to destroy. Don't be angry at her. She can't help it. But don't fall for the lie, all right? Yes, sir. And stay with the silent prayer and watch and just live your life. It's going to be amazing. I wish you well, man. Thanks for the call, the update. Yeah, thank you for, for everything. Thank you for your wise words. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse, for just, you know, being Jesse. Right okay? on. You're welcome, man. We need, we, we need more guys like you speaking the truth out here. Well, guys like you and other callers, you all waking up. So it's happening one man at a time. It's truly happening. I get calls from around the world from men and women now who are waking up. So stay with it. You're doing fine. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks for the call.